Okay. Hi, Maggie. Hi, Ryan. Um, welcome, everybody, to our second video in a series of videos interviewing our staff. Uh, I My name is Ryan Walsh. I am a uh, support specialist at a and &E, um, and I today I'll be interviewing Maggie Bowlby, a, a member of our IFS team and our YouTube team, and I'll let Maggie actually introduce herself. Uh, so my name is Maggie Bowlby. I am the Assistant Director of uh, Individual and Family Services at a &E. Thank you for, you know, doing this interview and doing this talk with me. Um, I'm looking forward to having people get to know you a little bit more um, with some of these questions. Yeah, so well, as far as your responsibilities go, what do you do at a and &E on a regular basis? So I do a really fun and interesting mishmash of different things. Um, so one of the things I do is that I'm a manager. I work directly with support specialists like you and facilitation specialists to support them in their work, um, which is work that I am also doing of facilitating groups and working directly with autistic adults and the families of autistic folks of all ages. Um, to support them and help them figure out what it is exactly that they need. Um, I also do presentations like our introduction to autism presentation and our hacks and strategies for autistic adults. I work with the YouTube team. Um, the really cool thing, it's I just get to do a really fun variety of stuff here. Yeah, Maggie does a lot of really great things here, and uh, she she works really hard to get to keep things going around here. So we we all really appreciate that here at A and E. Oh, um, and so my second question for you is, how did you come to work at A and E? Um, so my my history as a person as part of the workforce was as a teacher. Um, I taught for eight years in classrooms for autistic students. And um, as many teachers have found, <laughs> I was experiencing some burnout. Um, I'm neurodivergent myself. I'm an adhd -er. Um, And I was looking for a way to stay involved with the autistic community um, without teaching. And I was working at the time directly just with like one autistic adult as a life skills tutor. And I was like, hey, like what else is out there? Um, and I literally started Googling and I found AAD. And I came in as a life map coach, um, which is another wonderful program that we will talk about at some point on the series, I hope. Um, and so I was working one-on-one -on -one with autistic adults, helping them figure out like how they want to meet their goals. Um, and I loved that work so much that I kept my eyes open for um, internal staff jobs. And I came on staff in 2022. And it's been awesome to be here. Yeah, I... I think I speak for a lot of people when I say it's been good to work with you. And um, I know that you have like, you know, a long background in the autism community. Um, and, you know, given that background, what would you say that you appreciate about the culture here at A&E? Um, I just love connecting with the other people that we work with. Um, I think that we have such a supportive culture internally I feel so supported and then in turn I feel able to support the people who I'm working with and I feel like it's it's mutual like you and I have sat in meetings where <laughs> we have supported one another um and I've done that with many of our colleagues here and I think that that culture of support and flexibility and working to meet everyone where they are whether they're internal or whether it's one of our clients I think is just a really meaningful thing to have in a workplace. Yeah, I I definitely think so as well. Um, and so you know, given some changes that have happened here at A and E, you know, recently, um, what would you say that you're looking forward to in A and E's future? I feel like A and E is starting to become more of a thought leader in the autism space. Um, I think that we've been watching for a long time, right? I think we've been um, supporting our folks and doing an amazing job and following in the footsteps of people like ASAN. Um, and I think that what is great is for us to continue following the lead. I think I know I said thought leader, but like following the lead 
of the community and tuning in with the community and con continuing to reflect back what we hear, um, I think is the thing I'm most excited about. Yeah, I mean, I think that being a good thought leader in the community is magnifying the voices of the people who are actually in our community. And, you know, like, like, while we are thought leaders, I think that the thing, the thought that we're doing is like synthesizing all of that feedback into something that we can like, you know, make, make usable and like, you know, turn into a message to, you know, send out. So exactly. Yeah. Um, and so I guess, you know, thank you for telling us so much about what you do at A&E and, um, you know, your journey getting here and giving us like a little snapshot into that. Um, and I guess just like about yourself, you know, what are some things that you like to do when you're not working at, you know, outside of this space, even though I know you work a lot. <laughs> I do work a lot. <laughs> um, and when I am not working, I am a Netflix binge watcher and I'm proud to say it. Uh, Love is Blind just had their um, most recent batch of episodes drop and I'm looking forward to it this evening. <laughs> um, I also have a dog named Chicken Nugget who when he will snuggle me, I will always, always be available for snuggles. <laughs> Whether or not I'm working, to be honest. <laughs> Chicken Nugget is great. I, I've seen him on camera many times. He is highly featured in internal meetings because he, yes, he barks is. a lot. We all know Chicken Nugget around here. We can He can come onto the YouTube channel sometime. Yes, <laughs> I'm sure he will. Um, okay, well, thank you so much for interviewing today. Um, and thank you everybody for watching and we will see you in the next staff interview video.